I'm delighted to be joined by Sligo Rovers, David Cawley. Mm -hmm. David, we're here at the Aviva Stadium, the venue for the FAI Cup Final. It's a beautiful day. Does it give you a little bit of an appetite for playing here on the day of the final? Ah, it does, yeah. Look at the players, like, you know, these are the, these are the big savings you want to play in, in the big occasions. Um, but, you know, uh, some of you obviously going to be very hard on Docker on the back of uh, the league, what can I see? Backing up the league there during, during the week. Uh, it's going to be difficult, uh, we know that. They always are, anyway, semi finals. So um, it's a good occasion, and we're really looking forward to it. You'd be hoping that the dog had a good old session after winning the league at the, on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they did, but they'll, uh, they'll not tell you that anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know they've just won the league, so they're going to be on a high. You know, that you know. could make them more dangerous, you feel, really going into Sunday's game. Yeah, look, they, they've been top team for the last few years. They're, you know, they're top professionals. They'll, um, they've been in this situation before. And I'm, sure, I'm sure they'll be well prepared for us, don't worry. So Liam Buckley comes in at the start of the year, and you know he had a really big task on his hand and getting the right players in. And mm -hmm. I know even well, probably he needs another sort of close season to get more of the kind of squad players in that he likes. But you know to, to take Sligo this season and to to get you, I suppose first of all make sure you're not in the relegation scrap, and to get you this semi final of an FAI Cup. Like it's been a, a great achievement for Liam Buckley as a manager. Yeah, yeah, it has. Yeah, you know it wasn't wasn't an easy task. To take on when um, we were losing players, and obviously going into pre-season, we, we still had our full squad ready to go, and he's had to go, you know, far and beyond to bring in his type of player, the player he thinks is is gonna, you know, drive us on. And in fairness, he has. We we have a small squad. We don't have the luxury squad of Shamrockovers and Dundalk, Dundalk, but you know, we, we have. We brought together a, a group of lads who are. You know, good togetherness and you know willing to go to the very end, and um, it, it's it's something it's something to build on. And I'm sure he's thinking that himself. Uh, he probably want to expand the squad for next season. But from what what we've gathered this year, from we had a lot of not new lot of new lads coming in. We've had to settle from far and beyond, really. Like you know, we've Romeo, we've yeah, you know, Jamaican lad, so he's had to come over here to Sligo, part of the world. He's probably. He never been, and if it wasn't for fo for football, he probably never would be here. Um, and he's had to settle down, and he has. And he's, you know, with other players as well, that are through the whole squad. But he's uh, he's managing well, and you know, steady the ship. You know, with a big game or something to look forward to. Yeah, because I, interestingly enough, I heard his, one of his former players from St. Pat's, Conan Bourne, talking about Liam's approach in the dressing room before big games, and he's really. He said he brings a real calming influence to the squad within the dressing room, and as well in the build-up to a match week. He's always very optimistic. He said he's a real glass, a glass half full kind of person. Mm -hmm. um, is that the right kind of attitude you think you need in the manager to, to bring a kind of a, a calming atmosphere to the dressing room? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Especially in the big games, because one of the big games players will be nervous anyway. Um, whether you're young even or an older player, they'll be nervous one of the big games. So I suppose the last thing you want is manager jumping and shouting and screaming yeah. to add into that so yeah Conan's right in saying that he's obviously watching a long time and um, he does bring that cannon, cannon sense into the dressing room and you know especially in, and in the week build up the training this week we're in now you know he's been calm about things and I, I just think that that's the way Liam is and he's always been his whole career and I, I don't I don't see him changing on no matter what club he goes there or whatever things Things won't, won't change in that sense for him. He's, he's probably never been the sort of manager that would be up and down, jumping around, you know, getting too excited. But um, he does he does things his way, and he's obviously had had big success out of it, Pats and that over the years. So you know, that's, that, that's just Liam, and I can't see that changing. Do you think his winning experience, both as a player and as a manager in this particular FA Cup tournament, um, does that have its benefits as well? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen it all before is in parts of these big occasions, you know, semi finals, big semi finals at home, and please God we can get to the final there, and um, you know, with the big crowds and all that. Because we do have quite a young squad, there's not many of us over the age of 25, a handful, you know, a lot of our starting 11 players are 19, 20, so you've kind of you have to manage them as their first out in a big occasion like that, so you, you have to. Have to manage him well, and uh, I think he has done in fairness. 
It's your old man Tony there in the midfield. How do you find your playing along with those young lads? <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. It's feel, feeling like that, but um, you know, I, I had in fairness, I've been around the league a long time. You know, 28 now, so which isn't too old, I know, but the way the game is now, um, a lot of the younger lads are getting their chances earlier. So, which is which is good. So, you know, still good enough. Like, with lads like John Mann so mature and he's only 19 you know he's been like a rock in that centre half position exactly Player, players like that um, so mature on the pitch for a young lad and he's, this is only his second year as a, as a pro like, you know so yeah, yeah we have young lads like that it, it, it ta- I think a manager like Liam will only get the best out of them young lads and um, if a few of us other lads can get around them as well I think we have we've you know we've Johnny Levy John Russell we have Rona Murray and you know lads with won it, won the FAI Cup, so you know, players like that we can uh, get the arms down the young lads and you know, try and guide them as best we can. And in fairness to them, they are credit to themselves anyway, the way they approach training and all that. They, they are hard workers and um, I'm sure they'll, they'll get success. And do you feel, I've, I've seen Sligo a few times this season, that you're kind of providing that link between a very good defence and, and, and a good, uh, um, sorry, good strikers as well? Me, yeah, me. It, yeah, in midfield. Um, yeah, ah, well, there's a couple of us like with, with good mid- midfield players there. I've actually probably the last couple of years found myself going forward a bit more, yeah, rather than over the years, I've kind of been more defensive side of me. But uh, you know, all was that a in. conscious decision for yourself? Not really. I, th- I think last season, last season gone, and I think Jer, we had obviously Reese McCabe and the lads who were who could do the sitting roll and whatever, whatever, get on the ball and break up play, whatever it may be, and um, he allowed me just to do, go into like a box to box kind of mode, like mm. which is, which I started to enjoy and started getting on the end of a few crosses or hitting off shots and getting the odd goal here and there, and um, you know that's that's what I want, you know I want to, I like being busy, being getting up and down and tackles, whether it be shots, blocks, whatever, um, rather than just I suppose just sitting in trying to get on the ball. I do that as well. If I don't get on the ball, I'll go somewhere else and let someone else come in. That's kind of just what I picked up the last couple of years and Liam has obviously just continued to let me continue the way I've been doing and I'm really enjoying it. Um, you alluded to Romeo Parks there moments ago. Um, when he's on his game, he is just mm-hmm. you know, unstoppable. He's a brilliant striker, great finisher, really powerful player, physical. He's going to give the dog a few headaches. How important is he though? Is it though that he, he is playing at his best? Because we've seen maybe sometimes the season where he can come in and out of games. Mm. Um, he's, he's an absolute handful for I think to be sent back from up against him to be honest with you, because he's as you say powerful. He's so fast, and when I'm watching him, sometimes when I, if I get to slip him in with a pass or whatever, he's gliding past defenders, and he doesn't even look like he's sprinting yet. He's one of them type quick players and even if a defender does get near him he's just putting his arm out and you're not getting near him like he's too strong and uh, he's going to be scored some really important goals for us this year and to be honest you know, he's, he's right up there in this league you know um, top scorer if you take away penalties apparently from Pat Hoover no disrespect to Pat but yeah. from play he's the top scorer in the league yeah he's, he's, been, he's been brilliant this year um, and he's a player who will run in behind you or he does like to come and link up the play because he's, he's Jamaican lad, he's total football, you know, they love the football at their feet mm. and <laughs> once you get the ball to his feet, I can't really see many people getting it off him because he's, as I say, he's way too powerful. And just to ask you finally as well, because look, Dundalk, they're such a, they're a hard team for any team in this league to play, they're, mm. they're, they're so far ahead, but the victory that you got earlier this season, the 2-1, yeah. um, I was talking to Brian Carthy, he admitted they weren't playing well that day, but how important was that, or is that for Sligo going into this match that you know on your day you can't beat it? Um, I'm sure the lads that played, played that game will, will be thinking about how we started that game and, you know, and it was and you know, big team champions come to town, like, so was, we, we, that, that alone lifted us. So um, we just, I think, I think they took tip or knocking the ball around in, in their half and one of the lads just burst out, closed them down and then once we seen one lad go, everyone kind of went and we, that kind of set the tempo for us and um, we were just, we were really at them and in fairness, I think, I know we won 2-1 when we went 1-0 up, I think they got a penalty and 
we were still blowing the game. We, we created. We actually missed two or three good, really good chances. Whereas you don't, you probably get one blessed if you get two at ninety minutes against them. Though on their day, like so, this is in the first half. We, we could have been two ahead. And, but um, look, I would say Brian probably saying that it was, it was an off day for them. They were probably matched with us. So we, we were really at it that day, and you know everyone was driving forward, and we need that and more to come over Sunday with a, with a win, please, Bob. Sorry, just one more as well. You will also need the support of the Sligo Rovers faithful. It's sold out. There's going to be 800 and dog fans. I don't know, maybe 4,000 or so Sligo Rovers fans. A lot of pressure comes with that. You know, they're, they're, they're all expecting, they want to see their team win. Mm -hmm. But that's the kind of pressure, I suppose, as players you feed off and hopefully gives you a positive, um, you know, bounce going into the game. Yeah, massive. It's going to be a huge occasion for the club. Supporters are going to be behind us from the first minute because they haven't seen the semi final showgrounds in a long time. So that alone is going to give the whole place a, a lift. Um, but most of all, we're going to bring a serious crowd down as well. So you know, it'll just be a great occasion. And um, I really hope we can we can match it because, as you say, pressure wise, uh, there's pressure for us to perform at home, yes, but everyone, we know we're doing the dogs and nobody really expects us to beat them off. So, um, we'll play that. We'll play that uh, at our advantage, and you know, we'll hopefully our performance can match everything, and it can it can be a, a great night for everyone. Nicely played, David. I like the way you turned that, flipped that one around. <laughs> <laughs>